We've been reporting pro and anti Mubarak demonstrators clash today in Cairo. For more reaction to the protests in Egypt, we go now to Nazar Al Sayed. He is chair of the Center for Middle Eastern Studies at UC Berkeley. He joins us now live. Professor Al Sayed, welcome to Bloomberg's Bottom Line. We appreciate your time today. Thank you, Mark. Sir, even after President Mubarak announced that he would be leaving at the end of this term, we're continuing to see protests in the streets, and unfortunately, it seems that those protests are turning more violent. Your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I have to say that uh, this was totally expected. Uh, Mubarak took quite a long time to come to this particular decision of simply announcing that he will not run. He had this opportunity in the first speech in which he simply dissolved the cabinet, and instead of doing so, uh, he decided to hold off uh, as long as he could. Uh, what is happening in the streets of Cairo right now is simply a continuation of his decision uh, right. to stay on until September. Um, and I think that uh, what you also see in the streets of Cairo has to do with a group of people who have indeed benefited from the Mubarak regime right. and from the NDP, the National Democratic Party, uh, which is his party. Uh, and in a sense, they are out uh, wanting to, in fact, uh, make sure that the Egyptian people know where they stand. Should, uh, they have been described as, as thugs, and I think many of them are, but not all of them are. And I think that's a very right. important point to underscore. Professor Al Sayed, should the United States have pressured President? President Mubarak earlier to leave? I, I personally believe that the United States has actually done so uh, privately. I don't think that their public messages uh, have been equal to their private messages in that regard. Uh, I think that they must have told him uh, early on, back on the 25th and the 26th, that it's a very good uh, idea for him to at least announce that he will not run. Mm. Uh, he refused back then. Uh, he decided to do it, uh, you know, in the last possible moment. And, and here we can see uh, the impact of what's going on in the streets of Cairo. Right. Is, sir, is this a question of pride for President Mubarak? He is getting pressure from the White House and pressure from some other allies. But in a sense, he's saying, I'll leave when I'm ready to leave. Oh, absolutely. In fact, you know, an adequate uh, translation of his speech uh, in Arabic uh, would have actually emphasized this notion in which he said, I was born in this country, I have served it, I have served its military, and I will die in this country. Uh, it was, in fact, an indication of his intent not to be driven out of the country, like what happened with Ben Ali. Uh, and for him, it's not just the, even a matter of pride. He does not want to accept uh, being looked upon, if you will, as just another dictator who will be able to escape and seek exile in a place like Saudi Arabia. Uh, professor, who fills the power vacuum in Egypt? Would it be the Muslim Brotherhood? Would it be some other coalition? Well, at the moment, unfortunately, it is extremely unclear what will happen in the immediate future in Egypt. Uh, and I say that because I believe that the situation that we are seeing right now uh, in 2011 is not very different than the first few days of the Iranian Revolution in 1979 where you had a uh, number of uh, groups that were demonstrating in the streets of Tehran. Uh, you had the communists, you had the Mujahideen Khalq, you had the Islamists, so on and so forth. Mm. Uh, and then we ended up with the regime of Ayatollah Khomeini. Right. Whether, in fact, that is going to happen in Egypt or not will very much depend on what happens in the next few days. Well, I, I, um, sir, if I might, I don't think that uh, anyone expects the Muslim Brotherhood, if uh, they do form some sort of coalition with the incoming government, is going to win a majority of seats. But is it possible? they could win perhaps maybe 25 percent of the seats? No, I, I actually believe that we don't have, as scholars, we certainly don't have enough information to be able to say uh, that they are not going to win, you know, more than 30 percent or they're going to win 10 percent or they're going to win 50 percent. Uh, this is a very volatile situation. The Egyptian, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, is still looked upon by the Egyptian population uh, right. as a clean group of people. Uh, they may have been opportunistic because they did not necessarily start yeah. uh, these demonstrations, but they've managed to get into the field uh, right at the right time immediately right. after the Friday prayers. So it appears to me that uh, it's very difficult to tell. Yeah. Um, I think that those uh, who have been saying that the Muslim Brotherhood would not come to power right. uh, are trying to reassure themselves that some secularism can yeah. continue to exist in Egypt. But yep. there's, there's no evidence that that will be the case. Uh, Professor Al Sayed, in our last 30 seconds, uh, there are Berkeley students in Cairo. How are they doing? And I know you have family there as well. Yes, well, we, fortunately, we've actually managed to evacuate most of the majority of uh, Berkeley students who are in Cairo. They have uh, now all left Cairo. 
uh, except those who have elected to stay because they have family in Cairo. Uh, in the case of my family, they are following the events. They are trying to figure out, uh, you know, what is the safest place to stay. Uh, and of course, as you can see, this is impacting everywhere in Cairo. There are some neighborhoods that are safe, but only because of the neighborhood watch groups yeah. that have emerged, uh, yeah. which has been one of the most positive aspects of this development in Cairo. Nazar Al-Sayed, chair of the Center for Middle Eastern Studies at UC Berkeley, joining us live. Professor, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it.